Hello there, my name is Rich of the First Tennessee Man Channel, user review cartoon series, anime series. What's up, being Computer Random, and today we'll be talking about a Thinning Train Book 3, the half season, because HBO Max just dropped only half of it. So, yeah, we just gotta talk about the first five episodes, because the first five episodes really give you an impression what this book, or oh, book season 3, or whatever you want to call it, actually is about. Follow the eggs. Pack uh, group. Sorry, I keep wanting to say eight pack legends. I'm so used to saying that. But anyway, the eight packs group is basically they're jumping cart to cart to steal and destroy all the train cards. But except when the train cards decide to move unexpected, so everybody escape except Grace and Sam. Both of them got kind of stuck in the train and move over about 40 different cars to the main home base. So they have to basically go to cart to cart to get to their safe spot. But the only problem is, they actually found accident a new member called Hazel. She's a little bit different because the main two leaders of the Apex kind of stepped back because they found out Hazel has a number, but a very usual number. The number doesn't really shine, it's dim bright, it's almost like a dead color kind of sign. And they're sort of freaking out, they don't know what to do or what to do this sort of situation. So they decided to take a uh, Hazel back to their own home base, but the only problem is she has a, a friend, Tuba. Tuba is very protective about Hazel because Tuba lost a child, so you can see why he's so protective about Hazel. She wanted to defend anyone who gets near to Hazel, but the only problem is the ex pack group, they wanted to help her, but at the same time, want to destroy Tuba. So you have this sort of dynamic of sort of hatred day, who will pull the trigger, who kills the other character, but the end, you you find out a little bit more about Tuba, about Hazel, about Grace and Simon. Each one of them has a sort of backstory that's sort of a little bit messed up. Let's talk about Grace and Simon. How to describe their dynamic is basically Bunny and Clyde. Add a little twist of Peter Pan and Wendy because they are basically the lost little boys who basically run down the train to train through the story stuff. But I love it, their dynamic is so interesting because they're really good friends, but more than friends, they want to be lovers because they really are romantically connected to them each other because you feel they would die for each other for anything. They discuss what they're feeling. They're basically in love not official because you do feel their relationship very strong it's almost like they tempted to act each other to be boyfriend and girlfriend but at the same time they don't want to ruin the relationship their friendship because it's so real so uh I was the word looking for connected the best way. They don't want to ruin that sort of feeling. That's what at least I can tell because they really rely on each other. How to survive, how to think, how to act this sort of scenario. But at the end, each one of them has their own problems. For example, like Simon, his problem, he can't trust anyone because his former partner or former, uh, uh, I don't know what he called the creatures who live in the train, uh, Boyd, basically portrayed him. He was basically abandoned or trade off because the character who portrayed him was the cat of the train or the most infamous character of the whole Vanity Train uh, series. So you can see why he has issues with noise because he doesn't trust him or like him. You also have Sam who she is a reason why she likes this sort of reckless instruction and freedom is because her parents kind of discipline her to be perfect. They always have to be perfect, perfect people put for everything so you can see why she want to be free destroy everything destroy everything to the ground to make a point but that's why you can understand how both dynamics work so well why they complement each other and why they trust themselves so well but at the same time you also have Hazel who kind of interrupt their kind of relationship because Hazel is the, sort of the person they need to sort of chase to understand the scenario because Hazel has kind of a major problem that Hazel doesn't know who she really is. She only knows she's Hazel, and that's it. You know, honestly, that number she has in her hand is sort of have the twist. They have to spoil it because she's transformed to a yokai, I guess, of this sort of monster. She doesn't know why because have I just watched only half of it because I had to wait the other five episodes to drop. You don't know when, but besides that, that is kind of interesting. Why she was transformed? Why? 
she the only one who get the best to be punished about this sort of train, this curse. That is super interesting. But love it is sort of surprises going back and forth what actually happened in the group. That's the thing it grabs you. It feels they really got darker for this version, especially just for 10 minute episodes, it really sold it, it's just, wow, this is I think better, especially our two main leads, and silent, because they're, they're beginning, they're unlikable because what they do with the people in the train, and everybody around them but at the end, you start to like them because how the dynamic, and how much the respect of each other actually have you have this sort of disturbing sort of charm that grabs you away, but unfortunately, because it's only five episodes, I can't really talk about that much anymore, because I want to know more, why is Hazel transforming as to a yokai, that sort of question I kind of want to answer, but I can't answer it because it won't give me five episodes. It is totally unfair, bro. Totally unfair. Besides that, I gave really nothing else to say. Just thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.